online and uh, the number swelled. And, and when we, it was Dirk actually who, who showed me that Backgammon Galaxy was hosting national tournaments and suggested I get in touch with you. And I was very pleased to, uh, to be able to, to get 78 players signed up for this, for this uh, Galaxy Championship. Um, second highest behind the US of A. So we're very, very pleased to show the world that South Africa has a whole bunch of uh, very keen backgammon players. Yeah, um, the level's been uh, been pretty good. I think we had a few players who, who were a little bit surprised about the UBC format, um, weren't too keen on it uh, when they realized it was going to be quite difficult to progress, um, whereas uh, another contingent of player has, has really enjoyed that aspect of the challenge. And um, I think it's, it's shown players how important it is to play a good game, not just to play to win. We've had, so I was just going to say, we've had quite a few players who've managed to improve their PRs over the course of lockdown and even throughout this tournament. Uh, you can see their PRs have come down as they're focused more on, uh, on avoiding big blunders for the sake that it might cost them progression. And let me see if I can fix it. Yeah, people are telling me that there's no audio, which is weird. It's probably because Zoom is taking over. Let's see, let's see. Okay, what about now? I think I have sound now. Oh, sorry, guys. I think it's the Zoom stuff interfering. So my microphone was muted. At least you could hear Nick so far. So I'm Mike Olson from BackgammonGalaxy.com. This is the South African Galaxy Championship 2020 final. And uh, yeah, I'm just talking here with Nick, who was the tournament director of the tournament. And Nick was just telling us about, about the tournament. But I guess you all heard Nick fine. Yeah, okay, now we get the positive messages coming in. <laughs> okay, classic. So you're back. Yeah, we're back. Uh, no, no, Zoom is good. Uh, it's, we need the Zoom for the commentator cam. Um, okay, so Nick, uh, we had 78 players in this tournament. It's amazing. It's the second largest after the, the USA tournament. Um, so you have quite a community uh, down there in South Africa. I think the re for the rest of the world, we don't really know anything about the South African Bagaman community. So it's quite, ama quite amazing, uh, this tournament. And it's a really good introduction for you guys um, to enter the online world of backgammon and show the rest of the world that you have a presence um okay so but before we start nick you actually had some some uh, sponsors for the tournament right oh nick are you there yes i'm here ah, okay. um sorry there's a bit of delay and a bit of an echo ah. um yeah we we have a community um I've been involved uh, with the Cape Town community, um, started small and have just grown as more and more people have, uh, have gained awareness of the fact that we have a, uh, have a community here. Um, and, and, uh, year on year we've in increased player numbers. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you fine. You're good. I think there's just a little bit of delay between us. I, it's not good. Uh, there's too much delay. I don't know <laughs> what to do. Okay, uh, Nick, we, we got to make... Uh, you had a sponsor for the tournament. Uh, yes. A special sponsor. Can you tell us a little yes. bit about that? For sure. So uh, we were very pleased that Protea Hotels um, stepped up. Arthur Gillis, who's a member of our Cape Town Club, uh, stepped up out of the blue, didn't have to ask him. He gave me a call and, and volunteered uh, to sponsor some prizes for entrance. That's amazing. So we're really pleased. Yeah, it's really amazing. So we have uh, two weekend um, stays um, to do a draw for, and we also have a five-night stay. Um, and there are two hotels uh, that the winner can choose from. And what's the name of the hotels? 
Um, the one is King George Hotel, which is in a um, seaside town here in South Africa called George. And there's another one called uh, Kruger Gate, which is in the Kruger National Park, which is a really big uh, nature reserve. Okay. So, uh, so some really gonna, great prizes. And, so first, before and, uh, the matches, we're going to do the draw for the two weekend stays, right? And then after the match, we're going to do the big prize, which is five days stay, right? Is that the way we exactly. do it? Okay. I think so. I think that's a great idea. Okay, so we have the 78 players here in this uh, website called random.org and uh, we put in all 78 players and we're going to now do a random draw. The first two spots will win the weekend stay. Okay? Ready? That's right. Okay, go. Let's see. Okay, so the winners are Hani Niash and Ryan Brower. So congratulations awesome. to Hani Niash and random Ryan Brower for winning the weekend stay. Okay, so let's get on to the final. We have um, Max Urban versus Dirk Housley. Um, I think, Nick, you can tell the players that uh, we're ready to begin. Cool. I've just given them the thumbs up. Okay, I, I you were so kind, Nick, to, to get the players to make a little bio for us. That was a great idea because then we know, or at least I know, some some stuff about these two players that I can share with the audience. We have Max Urban, who is probably going to be the favorite. He's undefeated so far. Uh, he's been playing at a pretty good uh, PR average. Uh, what was his PR average, Nick? Was it four point something? His PR average has been 4.94 across nine 11 point matches. Okay, so that's yeah. pretty strong. And he's the strongest player so far PR wise in the tournament, right? Yes, absolutely. So, He's played at 2.3 in round eight. Okay, so Max Urban is going to be the favorite. He's 36 years old. He, uh, he's he been living in a couple of different places. I can see Cape Town and Johannesburg and some time in London. So he's been probably gathering some backgammon experiences. Oh, they started from different places. And then we have Dirk Housley, who's 49 years old, playing as Cheeky Boy. Oh, they have pre pretty good Galaxy rating, both of them. Um, yeah, and Dirk has been playing for many years as well. Pretty experienced player. He's even participated in the World Championships in Monaco once um, when John O'Hagan lost the final to, who was it, Dennis, Dennis Carlson. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Dirk is saying smash the like button. <laughs> That's good. Good stuff. Good man. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, here we go. Okay, so I guess we expect uh, Max to be the favorite, um, but uh, I wonder how uh, how much of a fight Dirk can pull off here. Uh, Dirk has one loss, right? Yes, in fact, his loss comes to Max in an earlier round. Okay. Um, in round seven. <laughs> so yeah, that means so they have met before. So Max is a huge favorite. Uh, Dirk basically has to beat him twice uh, in this double elimination format. Yeah. Right. Yes, I'm glad we clarified that. <laughs> yes, and it's uh, it's of course it's the UBC sudden death format, which means you you have to win both the match and the PR, otherwise it's going to be a draw. And uh, and it's an, uh, the first match is an 11 point match. If that ends up in a draw, we go to a five point match, three point match, and then one point matches until we found the winner. Um, what I is uh, Nick? Could you tell me what is uh, Dirk's uh, PR average for the tournament so far? Uh, Dirk's PR average has been 6.6. 6.6, um, okay. Yeah, he's been uh, pretty consistent across the across the event. Um, yeah, with with Dirk, I think he's uh, he's got his own style, and sometimes he'll he'll play what seems to be unorthodox for the sake of winning the match. And I think uh, the UBC format has has challenged some of that thinking a bit. Okay, um, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. He, He's obviously still done extremely well to uh, to an eight, eight out of nine, and I think uh, yeah, uh, you know, taking uh, of course the, the the PRs prove something here, but I think we have two of South Africa's strongest players in the final, so okay. everyone's really excited That's to see cool. them go head to head. That's great. And here in game one, we see a, a mid-range back game here from uh, from Max Urban is playing as the. No, sorry, Dirk is playing as the defensive player in this back game with a 2-4 back game. Max is trying to bring home his checkers. It's still early in the back game. Lots of clearing to do. 
So I think it's actually quite even here who's in better shape. Of course, Max is probably in a little bit better shape since he's the offensive player. But uh, yeah, Dirk has a strong game here. Uh, let's see how he plays this one. He, he's kind of lagging the timing for a back game, so I think eventually we'll have to. Uh, we're going to see him run from one of his angers, but I think he can keep it a roll or two more. So let's see. Is Max considering doubling here? I guess it's because of the lag of timing. I guess it's I haven't actually time. found the match. Oh. I just need to find the match. Oh, <laughs> I could send you the link. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, good. You found Got it. it. <laughs> yeah. So we see Max here with a very aggressive double. Uh, he's doubling because of the lack of timing from from Dirk. Um, I don't hate it, actually. The timing was quite poor. Oh, there's a double six. That's actually a horrible wow. roll for the timing. Yeah. And now Max is just going to keep his prime, and I think he's going to just make the ace point. Yes. Yeah. And Dirk is in trouble. Mm. Dirk is in real trouble. break from the six here. Um, yeah, oh, he actually does have I'll a just none. Play for one. You know what? He could also play. Uh, there's just one non crunching move here, and that is 23 to 21 and 6 to 3. That's the only play that doesn't kill any checkers. So I think yeah. I would be inclined to play that, but he found another mm -hmm. one 6 5. That's coming up with two. It helps. Helps yeah. a little bit. He can play a poorly timed deuce point game here. Eh, now it's not so bad. He's covering up the three point. He's not yeah. all. Oh, strong roll from Max. Yeah, correctly plays it. Six mm. five. Okay, so now it's just an anger game. So now mm -hmm. the question is does Mac play aggressive here and take off two checkers, or does he play safe and play something like this? Mm. Play safe. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The question is. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I would have played it aggressively. You think there's a gammon in this plan? That's the thing. There's always a little bit of gammon in it when it's a deep holding game. In this case, it's the deuce point game. So it's probably like right. between somewhere 16%. in the range of somewhere in the range of 10 to 15, probably in the lower range of that. 15. So let's say like 11% yeah. gammon. So okay. it's, there's a little bit of chasing gammon. Here you should definitely take off three, I think. Hmm. I think you should take off. Uh, I hope they've dropped from the YouTube. <laughs> at least there's a thirty. I, at least there's a thirty sec delay. I think for, uh, okay. for YouTube. So they, oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. But hopefully they did uh, do close it down. I I would think mm. that would be cheap. Oh, here's a shot. There's the shot. So Derek needs to hit. Derek needs to hit. I'm trying to catch up in the chat. Meanwhile. Uh, okay, someone says that your voice is louder than my voice. Okay, let me see if I can correct that. <clears throat> uh, okay, I just turned my microphone up. I hope that helps a little bit. And I can try to talk into the microphone. Okay, he's really thinking here, huh? <clears throat> oh, he takes off two checkers. Yeah. He plays it a little bit aggressive. You think it's too late for the aggression, though? Mm, no, I think maybe it was a good play okay. because of the crunch. Two again. Because of the crunch in uh, in Dirk's inner board, that's often the the the, the tell or the 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 signal. Right. Okay. If he has crunch, then you can play more aggressively and go for the gammon. But now, of right. course, it's very little gammon in this. Yeah, I like the play Ooh, from another shot. Mm. Another shot. Oh. No doesn't hit and it's a single which means he wins two points and oh double six let's see it <laughs> that would be a crazy game huh? oh that would be too crazy and yeah. a free decision to Dirk he has he can bear off two checkers no actually it wasn't a decision because the five was forced yeah. because you know the PR is decided by total equity divided by number of decisions and a decision is a non-forced move but uh, right. here, here all the forced moves were to take off a checker, so uh, For sure. he didn't get a free decision. Okay, yeah, Max knew how to play the double three. That's correct. Uh -huh. Correct opening game theory. And, of course, uh, Dirk is going to anger up. 5-4, another mutual holding game here. Not too exciting. Mm. Mm. Um, 
play the four behind the anchor. Yeah. I guess it's the right play on Un unloading the stack. So what kind of tournaments do you play down in uh, in Cape Town, Nick? You're based in Cape Town, right? Yes, in Cape Town. Um, yeah, we've got two two clubs in South Africa, Cape Town Backgammon and Johannesburg Backgammon Club. Uh, both clubs have a, an ongoing round robin. Um, so we've got um, we've got a league in, in Cape Town. It used to be, we used to meet regularly on a Tuesday morning in a coffee shop, and now it's all kind of spread out. People can play wherever they want and whenever they want. It's managed through WhatsApp. Nice. And, um, okay. So it's a WhatsApp group. And we have that's cool. yeah, it's, it's it's five different WhatsApp groups because we have five different leagues oh, from a okay. from A league right down to E league. Oh wow! And mm -hmm. We have uh, we have four seasons a year, and then there's relegation and promotion and an end of year tournament. So it's it's become quite structured. That's so awesome! I mean, the only other country that I know of who has it this organized, I think, is Denmark. They have a team tournament yeah. as well, where they have promotion, relegations, and championship and stuff like this. So that's really right. cool. Yeah, uh, it kind of evolved organically. Yeah, uh, it's probably based on the uh, on the English uh, soccer leagues. Most of us are big football uh, football fans. Okay, that's good. Rugby is big in South Africa as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, quite a sporting uh, sporting nation. Yeah. That's yeah. I think we cool. do better as a as a rugby playing nation than a soccer nation, but uh, the sport is popular here, definitely. Okay. Do you know mm. the the player Sipo Sisu Zuma? Sipo Sisu Zuma. Yeah. 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 For sure. He do you played, know? Him? Yeah, yeah. He played in the Danish league many years. He was a huge star player. The probably the best player in the Danish league for a couple of seasons. He was amazing. Wow. When That's he awesome. when he was in his prime, he was really really good. Very cool. Who do you support? Uh, whoever plays well. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a the... team there in in Portugal that you support? Uh no, just I'm not a Por I'm I live here, but I I'm not a Por I'm not Portuguese, so I I just support sure. whoever plays well. Okay. <laughs> well, is it the same with backgammon? Um, back. Who do you support here, for instance? I mean, back. And you don't really support players, right? Sure. I mean, I always cheer for the players to find the good moves. Um, okay. And then, I, for me, back. I'm is, is competition, so I'm I'm trying to sure. root for myself and beat the competition. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, okay, so, so another back game here. Mm -hmm. This this time it's a shallow back game, the four five back game. So this is completely different from what we saw before. Um, mm -hmm. Here, uh, he actually, even though the pip count is not so far behind from Dirk, he actually does have reasonable timing here, because in the mm -hmm. shallow back games, the shots will be generated earlier on. Uh, for instance, now during the the Baron, I'm not sure what Max is thinking so long about here. For me, this is a pretty clear play. I don't like that play. I would play mm -hmm. nine to six with the last three rather than six to three, not mm -hmm. wasting a spare checker behind the angers. I don't mm -hmm. really see the logic behind it he could play all can you say what you mean by a waste is it a waste of a checker to go behind the anchor it, it's when you're bearing in uh you any loss of checkers behind the angers is a loss in flexibility um so okay. i i don't really understand what the gain was here because he could play all of his numbers right. anyway by playing the other one um okay so for me it was just a little bit uh yeah meaningless pointless Pointless. You'd rather bear into the six points rather than to the three points. Yes. In yeah. Okay. Because that checker on the six point, it's a useful spare checker. Right. It can play the three, four, and fives. Now that checker down on the three Let's point see. can only play a one and a deuce. Right. Let's see. Uh, Meanwhile, Cheeky Boy is getting set up nicely. Yeah, he has pretty good timing here. Um, yeah. I think maybe he has to let go of the front anchor next time but for let's sure. see ah uh, is this a cube for max i own this is only a cube if the timing is not good for cheeky boy or for dirk i think cheeky boy mm. has reasonable timing so i think he has to take one more shake and when he clears mm. the nine point now is the time to cube so it's a little bit okay. aggressive very easy take yeah and this would be an efficient cube and actually a tough decision next time for dirk okay, okay. double five he lost his market so now he's happy yeah. that he he cubed. I don't think it's too too big of a deal. I don't think it's a big mistake to cube there from Max, but I think it's just one 
step too early. It would be more efficient to wait until you have three points to clear, and then you double. And I think actually against the four-five back game, it might be a pass for the for Dirk when he when mm -hmm. the offensive player only has three points to clear. But usually it's a take. Right. Okay. Four one. That's pretty good. He's considering the anger split here for contact, but I don't think he mm -hmm. should do it. Good play. Mm -hmm. And he's getting his shots. He is. So the question is, which ace do you play? 11 or 12 shots, but you can clear the 7 point. I think that's the right idea. Give one more shot. Oh, sorry. No, this Easy is 13 shot. It's 13 shots. My bad. So it's two more shots in this variation. Uh -huh. But he right. clears the 7 point rather than the 6, so I think it's okay. Because it's easier to clear on the next roll. Yeah. It seems like okay. a valuable uh, or a, a reasonable price to pay to clear the seven versus the six point. Do you think he's thinking now of splitting at the I back? I think definitely, and I think he should. Yeah, yeah that's a good play, yeah. really good play. Because yeah. look at six five, six four, all the high numbers. Yeah. yeah. Six three as well. Good play from uh, Dirk. Mm -hmm. So he's very aware of this concept. That's cool. He's a he's a good student of the game. He likes to uh, likes to read. Okay, cool. That's yeah. good. <laughs> then he should be familiar with this uh, this is the split th this play oh why didn't he take a checker off that was a mistake from Max he should have just played nice. 7 to 2 and take a checker off but no big deal is the amoeba split is that exactly right? that's what Michi calls it right I think I called it splitting for contact in from basics to badass but that was from back in 2013 or 12 uh, and then huh? in the meantime Michi gave it a better name the Amoeba split uh, okay so he's popularized uh, <laughs> yeah he has great terms do you prefer it when people uh, call it by uh, by your by your name no not at all <laughs> I'm using Michi's terminology all the time okay I think okay. it's just superior I even asked Michi to name a play that I was I had like a typical play maybe it comes up in this match let's see but there's like a typical play when you're playing a holding game with a goalkeeper no not, a, not even with a goalkeeper um, where you run from the your anger rather than running from the midpoint, and I needed a name for it, and then I asked Michi to come up with a name, and he ca he called it the dragon with a tail, <laughs> <laughs> which crazy. is a cool cool name for the play. That's I hope it comes cool. up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and your name for it had to do a little bit more with football. I, I didn't have a name for it. I didn't have a name for ah, it. That's okay. why I asked Michi. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's cool. I hope it comes up so we can, uh, yeah, we see, can see what it is. Uh, okay, 5-1. He shouldn't hit here. He should not hit. Did he slot the 7? Oh, no, just play, not slot, just play 13-7, to seven, I think. I mean, 13-7, right. Because he's up in the race and he's outboarded, so he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to risk his race lead here. Right. So he, but he's definitely thinking about it. I mean, it's not, sure. it's not completely ridiculous to hit it's still a reasonable play oh that one right. oh no no no, no. <laughs> that's too big too big yeah that's even too at big. the match score yeah it's way too big the match score is not okay. that cruise double tiger no no this is not a double <laughs> tiger the double tiger also from michi is when you <laughs> double hit and slot points that you want to make the ace point is uh, not a point you want to make um <laughs> so that was an overplay a uh, pretty big nice. overplay actually Okay, could get punished here. Yeah. yeah, because he's, he was up in the race. There's no need to to risk all that race value. Mm -hmm. okay. So where do you play the three other fours here? He um, obviously hits with one. Yeah, he can actually he play. The four. He can play really bold here. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make the four point with two okay. of them, and then either I come out, come out. or I play thirteen oh. to nine. Wow, mm, many options. Yeah, that's that's probably what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, because he has a... Th yeah, I like this play. Um, I like this play. He has a great advantage in inner board strength here, so he can definitely play bold like this. Right. Now, Dirk needs to produce something good, otherwise he's going to get cubed. Okay, that's reasonable. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think he's going to hit on the 9 point. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with the chat here. And like his straight style. I see a lot of familiar South African names in the chat. Really? There's, cool. there's also an international audience. There is. There's some Turks yeah. on here. There's some 
Tim Cross is on. Oh, Tim Cross is on a stream tomorrow night. It hasn't been announced yet, but he's going to play against Stenic Siska, Battle for the Crown, number one wow. versus number two on Backgammon Galaxy. Wow, very cool. And then we have 93 linked asking when I will be doing some streaming and playing from my own channel because he misses some new videos of gameplay. Hopefully soon, mm-hmm. 93 linked. Joe Bernaba says 42 likes, 123 watchers. Smash the like button, guys. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Okay, 2-1. Ah, oh, this one is interesting because he can hit on the inside or he can hit on the outside. Mm-hmm. You drop into the 5, should he? Um, I think you should hit on the outside just okay. because it's better Why to... Is that? Just because usually, I mean, the default play is to hit on the outside. So you send one okay. extra back checker. Uh, the, the hitting on loose is the exceptional play, I think, the, or the exception. It's okay. not the default. And here, I don't okay. see any reasons to to stray away from the default play. You want to just okay. hit in the outfield. Mm. Right. I'll tell you what my thinking would be. Mm-hmm. It would be that if you give him a chance to make that anchor, you're gonna have a much tougher game from here on. Well, um, you're still up in the race, right? So. Okay. Uh, it's like you, uh, yeah. Usually, you just want to hit the the outside checker and and try to get one more back checker. The more back checkers you get, uh, hit back, the more you're priming and blitzing. So, okay. Unless there's a good reason for hitting loose on the five, sometimes it's crucial that you shouldn't make the anger, and then you fight for the five point. But that's not really the case right. here. Even if he makes the anger, you're still way up in the race. Okay. Oh, this one is interesting. Six here. Yeah, yeah, really tricky here. Really he has tricky. to break his anchor. This doesn't count as a wow. The dragon with a long tail would. It's no, <laughs> no, no. It's not. It doesn't. No, it's not related to this position. At okay. least not yet. Um, I wonder what you should do here. This one's really difficult. You could play seventeen to six. I think maybe that's my play at the end of the day. Uh, mm. I mean, the six really. Yeah, it's a little bit too deep. Mm. Ah, maybe not because he leaves the blood in front of the strip points out in the outfield I don't mm. know that was a tricky one mm. deuces okay here's a good lesson with double deuces and double aces always look for the point shift so he should definitely mm. consider Three, it. Two, one. yes definitely consider it okay. uh, the yeah. problem is he doesn't really have a blitzing position he's lacking a little bit of ammunition he has three back checkers mm. Um, so maybe 13-9 yeah but what else if he plays 13-9 he leaves or 6-2 off. oh yeah he could play 6-2 that's probably a better move than 13-9 but I think ooh, maybe you just make the point shift here and try to hit that second jagger mm. okay he ends up making the deuce points definitely a reasonable play I wonder if the viewers has an opinion on that double deuces because that was a little bit tricky for me. 6-4, mm. that's a good shot. Consolidates. What was your PR, Nick, in, in this tournament? Um, 7.75. Um, Not bad. I must admit, I, I had an outlier, <laughs> which uh, I wasn't taking a game seriously enough. Oh, that's the biggest mistake you can make. <laughs> then you get punished. That gammon is cruel. I mean, sure. he, is, that's the most important thing. That is to be focused. The moment you lose focus, yeah. then everything sure. goes down the drain. Yeah, I, I, I won the battle, but it just ruined my it ruined my average. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. uh, Max just just made a play where he risked his race lead, and now he got punished for it. Mm. Um, he could have destroyed his inner board instead I think I didn't really like his play oh by the way mm. Max has spent a lot of time already half his time bank right that's something he should be, be an issue. yeah a little mm. bit worried about uh, would you say that with, with Cheeky Boy trailing 0-4 he would be looking to cube 
a little bit earlier than you than if the scores were even. Yes, you definitely need to adjust. Uh, but seven away, uh, seven away, eleven away, or eleven away, seven away is not that big of a deal yet. It on recubes is a huge deal. But on initial cubes, I mean, yes, you adjust a little bit, but not too much. And also another mm. crucial, crucial uh, element is that it's not just any position where you double more aggressive. It's in the sure. gammonish positions. Positions. Right. So in the, right. this position, for instance, this is a holding game position, a mutual holding mm. game, completely gammonless. So here you, you don't want to double aggressively at all. Uh, you basically do no adjustments as if this... Uh, okay. um, compared to the zero zero score okay interesting and now i think max needs to come up with three because the race is getting too close and he's getting primed a little bit so i think he yes. needs to come out with three and then think about the last five which is probably just going to be played to the 11 point okay it's too negative to pay six one it is it is yeah. um it kills it. he has the stronger inner board so he can, yeah, he can afford to take that risk. Um, this play I don't really like. He creates dis uh, disconnectivity. And that blot on the four point is really vulnerable to getting blitzed. And he's without an anger now. It could happen now. It, it is. I think it will happen now. Even though you leave yeah. shots, I think that Dirk wants to attack on the four point. Good play. Yeah, and maybe Dirk has a cube now. This is not a holding game anymore. Now there right. is some gammons in it. I think it is a cube. Oh, yes, this is a cube. Definitely. He has some crushing numbers here. Like Let's see if he's picking up the right, uh, the right vibes. Yeah. Like imagine a double aces. Oh, he doesn't double. Uh, he could really yeah. lose it. Look, imagine, look, yeah, if, he, if Max had fanned here, how big of a market loss that would have been. And now nice. we have an even position. Lucky roll from yeah. Max. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're back to playing a holding game. Hmm. A little bit of action and then nothing. <laughs> Disappeared. Yeah. Meanwhile, the the clocks keep ticking down. Uh huh. Mm. Okay, so Daniel Johnson is correcting me in the chat. He says with four back checkers in a holding game, it's a bit more than gammonless. Well, you are right, uh -huh. Daniel. That is true. It was probably <laughs> like a seven percent, eight percent gammon chance or something like this because of the four back checkers. When I stated right. that it was gammonless, but as a general statement a holding game position is usually pretty gamblers right i see both the uh, both the prize winners are in the chat arnie and ryan oh congratulations guys yeah uh and we also have uh, some comments both tim cross and mick larson wants wants to make the deuce point with the double deuces before okay so that mm. was comforting for max that was a pretty tricky yeah. move um, Alex Wilson asked, Mark, could you please tell us about other countries tournament upcoming in the, and the upcoming Champions League? Is there any news? Well, Alex, um, yeah, we are organizing uh, a bunch of new countries now. Uh, I think it's Iran, uh, Spain, Portugal, and I don't remember the fourth one, but they're coming some, some of the next, uh, wave of tournaments coming right up and uh, yeah the idea is still to to make a, a champions not champions league champions tournaments where we have the winner of each country representing their country and then battling it out in the ubc format so that's going to be a lot of fun hopefully we can do that at that's the end of the idea. year very cool and now we have, have other countries uh have other countries asked for ubc tournaments iran Iran. Oh, yeah, Peru, I think, is coming up as well. Peru. They have a pretty big community cool. in Peru. Awesome. Um, okay, and here we have uh, Dirk struggling with the 6-2. Six, six <laughs> this is tricky. Mm. This is really tricky. Can you duplicate twos by bringing the 13 oh. down? Yeah, maybe. No, wait. That's two blots in direct range. Oh, what a horrible roll this is, huh? Yeah. What about something like 18 to 12? Yeah, I think this is the play. 14. I think this it is only leaves one direction. Yeah, exactly. Just minimize shots. I didn't get to count all the no shots that each of the variations gave, but it looks reasonable yeah. to me. You could maybe also play the deuce from 18 to 16 instead of this ugly 42, because it's right. still just an ind indirect shot. Mm. Oh, he misses everything here. Yeah. That's a horrible shot. 
Mm. How do you play this one? If Max was up in the leave race... Leave his anchor. Leave one, leave one from his anchor. Yeah, that's the thing. But that's what you want to do if you're up in the race. Now he's down in the race. Uh, and you don't really want to leave your okay. anchor. But, I mean, what's his alternative? Then he has to mm. crunch? No way. So I guess <laughs> maybe you have to do it anyway. Just run from the 20 point and then, then play an anchor. This is actually a dragon and a tail. That's a uh, dragon okay. and a tail. Because then nice. the, the 16 point would be the dragon. Yeah, he finds it. And and mm. the tail is the, the, the blood on the 20 point. Huh. But usually you want to do it um, when you're down in the race and your opponent is crunched. But here it's like he didn't really have any other alternatives. I see. Again, maybe... Could Dirk have doubled this? He's up in mm. the race. There's a little bit of crunch with Max's position. He has a little bit of attack. I think... Mm. Dirk could have could have put uh, sent over an aggressive cube there, but chose not to. Right. And now I guess he's considering whether to attack or not. Uh huh. <laughs> Suzanne Brooks what do you says. Think of the attack? Oh, sorry. Um, I was just commenting on Suzanne Brooks in the chat. She says, "Cheeky boy, uh -huh. your cheeky girl is here." I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know if maybe Suzanne is his wife or a girlfriend or something. Mm. Uh. What do I think about the attacking play? I think I would just play it slow here because okay. he hasn't cubed, so he's not chasing a double gammon. You're up in the race. You can play with zero blots. So I think I'm just going to play it slow here mm. and play uh, uh, 18 to 12. Okay. I guess 18 sure. to 12 Let's... is a little bit better than playing 12 to 6. Mm. Yeah, that's right, my play as well. It. He found it. They spent an awful lot of time so far. Wow, sixes. Yeah. But sure. he, he cannot clear completely. Mm. But he's going to be up in the race, so he's going to run. I think he should just run from the 20 point. Yeah, I think that's the play. Yeah. 5-1. Now, now Dirk is down in the race, so now he's going to make the ace point, I think. Certainly. He doesn't want to so give up does, contact. When does Max have a cube? Yeah. Oh, this is completely not different yet. position. Yeah, definitely sure. not. Uh, this is way too even. And this mm. still just a mutual holding game. Ah, maybe nice. you can call it a one ah, one way holding game, whatever. So this is way too even to consider cubing and not volatile at all. It could be a double if, if one of the players gets a shot. But again, this the race is too close, and uh, he needs to play safe here, Dirk. He can't mm. volunteer shots. And Cape 0815 says, never make boost midpoints. I'm not sure what he <laughs> means, but <laughs> you know what he means? No idea. <laughs> what Maybe is we a, can ask him to explain himself. What is a boost midpoint? Maybe he means like the stacked midpoints or something. And uh, Guther Snoother says, time is dreadful for both. I guess that's why Maxi just rolled a double five. Problem solved. And it's going to be a double pass. Okay, 132 so, viewers. Pretty good. 65 nice. likes. So people are smashing it. If you haven't smashed it yet, please do. Five zero for Max. Um, okay, mm. an aggressive pl opening play here from uh, from Dirk. I like it. Mm. This is definitely increasing the probability of getting into a more complicated situation. I think that's what he likes, and I think against most players, it uh, it works in his favor. Against Max, he might have found his match. It could be, but it's definitely increasing the the volatility. Um, right. I mean, down 5-0 and he has to win too. Uh, I think that was a mistake. I think that's the wrong idea. I think you make the 21 point with that 4-3. Nice. Now you definitely make the 20 point. Uh, okay, so there's an explanation. Um, Guther Snoother says both, i.e. 13 and 12. Uh. Okay, so boost. Ah, maybe he meant both. And it was uh, uh, the autocorrection or something like this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Could be. Oh, Never see. make both you midpoints. Make both midpoints. That points. makes so much okay. more sense. Right. 
Yeah. Anyway, we have an early back game developing here, so that's interesting. Mm. Uh, so that's a, is that called a one and five? Back yeah, game? that's a one and five back game. Uh, it's not a it's not a defined back game yet because we still have an open position. Both players are trying to prime and blitz. Uh, but right. so far, it's an uh, I would categorize it as an early shallow back game because it involves the, f the five point, which okay. would then make it a shallow back game. Double deuces, another very good roll, but tricky to play. Um, hmm. He could have gone wow. all in for the back game move here and slotted the four point instead of playing 23-24, yeah. uh, 23-21. I think actually I would have liked the slotting play. That's a good shot. Now you're going to make the nine point. Yeah. Mm. Stabilize the position a little bit. Mm. Fives. Oh, that crunches Max a bit, doesn't it? It does. I don't think it's a good shot. I think Max would have just preferred to just jump out with one of the back checkers. Yeah. Now he's kind of getting stuck with the back checkers. He's getting primed a little bit. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't definitely wasn't a good shot. Uh, I think Dirk, now he's going to come down and slot the ten point. That's the mm -hmm. only pure play he has. It's definitely wrong to give up the eight point to hit loose. It's also wrong to give up the back game here, I think. So mm. I think there's only one play here. Oh, he's nice. spending a lot of time. Both players are spending a lot of time. Yeah. It must be tough to play uh, in the limelight. Is Probably Live. is. Maybe they're a little yeah. bit nervous. I wonder if they spend this much time in their other matches as well, or if they're putting in an extra extra effort. I think there's extra effort, certainly. Yeah. Hopefully they'll gain something from this experience and they can rewatch the, the the match on YouTube. And That's how I feel with I some of the big matches I've played. Uh, I mean, I, I had the Nordic Open final in 2014, with Falafel yeah. doing the commentary, I still remember wow. all the blunders that I did, just because <laughs> I regularly, not regularly, I reviewed it a couple of times, you know, and this I'm big sure. match, and yeah. you, so you get an emotional attachment to the blunders that you make, and that's the best way to learn, in my opinion. Right. Huh. I'm sure they'll both rewatch this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> learn something from it. That's what we're mm -hmm. here for. Okay, double five. Nice. Guess it's a good roll because look, it in actually increases yeah. his prime value. Right. For three, now he's got to run. He has to run. Max has to run. Definitely wow. good okay. play. Yeah, running out of timing, and he has an advantage right now in the inner board strength. Mm. That is a good shot. So does he play mm. it pure and efficient and just make the four point, or do you? Just pick and pass and split. I think I like this play because the split is important. Right. Without the split, it's more difficult to escape the opposing prime. Oh, yeah, that's a good cube. Down 5-0. Mm -hmm. I don't see Max passing this. That would be weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. good take. I think it's a good cube because of the match core mm -hmm. here. Dirk right. is adjusting well. Nice roll. 3-2. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So Max mm. is just going to play this one slow. No need For to sure. tempo hit or anything. Wow, strong roll from mm. from Dirk. He's going to make the deuce point in his face. Come on, Dirk, <laughs> don't spend time. Why are you spending yeah, time on this one? Maybe he's thinking of coming up with a three somehow at the back. Uh, but what about, I mean, he has, to, he has to spend all four of them in his own side. He's spending too much time. He is spending too much time. Okay, we're up to 73 likes now. That's pretty good. Mm. Okay, he does find the right play. Good play, Dirk. I just had an issue with the time you spent finding it, but at least you found it. <laughs> yeah. Now he should definitely attack. Definitely attack. There's no other play, Max. If not, mm. you risk uh, your opponent making a six prime next roll. Good play. Okay, lucky roll from Dirk. Follows up with a hit. And Max is in trouble. Yeah. He's going to hit on the one? Yes, definitely. Mm. Fight for your opponent not angering up. Now he's going to put the, another piece. Yes, third checker on the roof. Mm. Great shot. Oh. oh, no, no, no. 
that's the wrong mm-hmm. idea. I mean, it's not a blunder because I think it's difficult to make a blunder here, but it's. I think it's better to just put the third checker on the roof. You still have seven right. and eights that cover, so there's plenty of uh, covering numbers. Ah, mm-hmm. yeah, here he has a choice. Does he cover the ace yeah. or does he come out? Ah, this one is tricky. Interesting. This one is tricky. Hmm. <laughs> what would you do? Um, I would cover the ace. <laughs> you would cover the ace. We do have quite a lot of time to roll that three, don't we? But I mean, hmm, maybe I would just come out. Hmm. I'm not sure here. But he has to make a decision because he has a time. Yeah, one mm. minute and twenty-five seconds left. Let's see in the chat what you guys want to play here with this five-three. This one is uh, is a really funny problem. Yeah, we have two guys saying out, two guys saying cover. Mm. Uh, he also had the other play where he comes up with the three and then don't come out to make the the, the fifteen point. Yeah. Then you have double shot next time. But it's not really crucial to hit that third checker. He should do it, of course, mm. to increase the gammon chances. But he's a big gammon favorite anyway. Mm. Okay, this looks like a gammon to me. For sure. Ah, we have a lot of different opinions here in the chat. We have co- get out, yeah. get out, cover, cover, <laughs> come out and eleven, cover, cover, out, out, go, go, go. <laughs> we have. Oh, that's cool. Many different opinions. Um, yeah, we also have the middling play, uh, where he comes up and then he played nine to four or something like this with the five yeah. to have the double shot. Um, okay, so this is now a bear off position versus contact. So Dirk wants to play as safe as possible because that will definitely win him a gammon. So here, for instance, mm-hmm. he should play safe. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's four one should. three two. Yeah, I think that's the play, yeah. and there's not a big gain from having the fourth checker off because you have an even number of checkers left here. Nice. So if you 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 don't even gain an extra roll by by taking a check the fourth checker off. Right. So I think that was a good play. Mm. Really good play actually. Stop five. Yeah, it's gonna be a gamma. It's gonna be five yeah. four. But I mean, mm. Dirk has to speed up now. He spent all his time. Mm. This is gonna be problematic. I don't know if he's he's uh, or, or either of the players are used to playing speed. Do you know that, Nick? If they're used to playing speed, Gammon? Uh, not regularly. Um, in that case, yeah, they might be in trouble. Yeah, definitely. Oh, he doesn't save the Gammon. It is a Gammon. Lucky for Dirk. He has to win seven more mm. points, and he has. One minute and 15 seconds to do it. Sure. Okay, he chooses to split here. <laughs> yeah, Neil. So, in, in the event of a timeout, is, uh, is PR penalized at all? It is. Yeah, then you it get is. a resign action. So, that's oh. that's going to be fatal. If you time out, you will definitely lose the PR as well as the match. Oh. Uh, okay. So, yeah, timing out is fatal. That's just. Oof unacceptable basically mm. that would be a crummy way yeah. for this to end <laughs> it would <laughs> um, okay 4-1 oh that's a good roll huh but I think you want to make the 20 point here huh. I think you want to make the 20 point uh, wow. yeah you had three really good choices there yeah I, th- mm, I think that was the least one of my favorite mm. actually but I'm not sure that was interesting that was a funny f- uh, for mm-hmm. one. That's one of those we can check after the match. For sure. If he had more time, he maybe would have thought longer. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of those that were, I would have taken my time, but of course I wouldn't have spent all that time coming into this, this game so far. Yeah. 5-1. Uh, oh, now it's just mm. a, not a good game here for Max. He mm. could tempo hit on the ace, but uh, it's also bad, right? He could come out with the to the 18 point. Yeah, I mean that's the DMP play. That's the constructive play. Mm. And a great cube from uh, from Dirk, and I think this is a pretty big pass for Max, especially considering the time. 
but I think mm. it's just a big pass here. There's too many shots. Yeah, good okay. pass, good pass. It's very gammonish. Let's see how Max plays this 4 6 4. Okay, he plays the good old split and down. Mm. Good move again from Dirk. The counter with the 6 5 to 1. Then you make the 5 make the Yes, definitely. Mm. 6 3. Makes make the, the 3. Th correct. Run. Okay. Correct. I ran. Oh, he ran? Mm. Ah, I don't think that's the right idea. You're not scared of the blitz, really. Dirk has so little ammunition. Now he's gonna slot the seven point. Definitely slot mm. the seven point here. Unstack the midpoint. It's nice. way better than slotting the three point. Yeah, it's oh. no, it's not good. And there's a little bit of duplication, of course, but I think he should have used this opportunity when Dirk had two inner blots to mm. to make a constructive to play. Yeah, to unstack nice. and make an. Yeah. That's a good move from Max. I like that move, making the five. Mm. 5-1, uh-huh. Gonna cover the ace and split. Mm -hmm. Now ne Max needs to cover something. Okay, it's not bad. I think make it's... Ace. Yes, yes, make the ace and hit. Even though Max is a little bit down the race, he'd prefer to just play a priming game plan. But, I mean, mm -hmm. when... I mean, you have to play what the dice give you, right? So yeah. here, it's just... It's not bad, actually, putting your opponent on the bar. Okay, so it's ah uh, no 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 he's not considering cubing. Three two he needs to play you safe. Think there would be a cube there? No no no, it was. Okay. I was just getting fooled a little bit by he took a short break before rolling the dice. I think nice. he should play safe here because the race is too close. Mm. Yeah, thirteen to eight. You don't want to throw away the race equity. That's a very aggressive play when you're outboarded and the race <laughs> is even. Yeah. <sighs> it's a little bit too no, aggressive for me. Anchor. Yeah, he gets the anger. It's not a cube, Dirk. Okay, good. Okay, that's oh, where's the third one? Awkward one. Mm. Is three two the third one? I think so because Dirk is ahead in the race. So no, you don't want to do this when you're ahead in the race in the mutual holding game. That's mm. too big. You don't want to get hit and lose your race value. That's the thing. <laughs> but now Max has to leave a shot. Yeah, so that's the best way to do it. Dirk really wants to hit a five here. That's a good shot. And with the ace, I think you need to safety the blood on the seven to minimize well, shots. That's a bit it's too not in his style. <laughs> okay. That's a good cube. Very good cube. And a tough decision for Max here. You'd take, I'd say. You'd say take. Um, six away. The, the Okay, he has the anger, which is crucial, of course. So I think it's a take, but that ace point is definitely hurting him. It's really, really hurting him because it de de decreases his contact value. So what is contact value? Nice. Contact value is the chance of hitting a turnaround shot and winning the game from there. And with the ace point made, it just decreases your chance of winning the game from there after you make nice. the turnaround shot. Mm -hmm. That's a great shot, double three. Wow, fours. That's <laughs> what you need. Sure. That's what you need. So he's, he's gonna his way out. Mm. Uh, I think he's gonna make the four, and then with the last four, he has to choose whether to play it big with thirteen to nine or play it mm. safe with eight to four. Mm. And you need to count the numbers here. How many shot numbers if you play it big? So it's five, three, six, two, six, three. So that's six. What about numbers. coming out from the back to? Um. Uh, oh yeah. Duplicates the five on the return hit. That's actually a good point. It, it duplicates 3 5, right? 3 5, yeah. That's the only five. one. Okay. Uh, nah. Maybe it's pointless, actually. Um, yeah. I think I like his play so he here. Just in. zero shots mm. because your opponent has a five point board. So I think that was a good play from Max. 6 3 is a little bit annoying because you would prefer to play with the blood or the spare checker on the 21 point, but he was not mm. able to do so. Okay, 6-5. That's also a bit problematic. Mm. <laughs> that is actually very problematic. You don't want to bury Just more checkers. Aye, but you oh. don't want to bury more checkers. I, I don't know. So how would you, yeah, how would you play it? Yeah, that's, I really want to come out, <laughs> but then I would have to leave more shots. So maybe I would have spent time thinking about it because that was a tough one for me. 
How would you play it if you have 56 seconds in time? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. You never really know where. It's easy to sit here when you're doing commentary because yeah. you're not 100% in the game. We're just talking sure. to each other. We're talking about about the game, but the players are yeah. really concentrated and 100% focused in the game, and we are not. So who knows how we would actually react to the positions if we were in the hot seat. Absolutely. 6-2, that's a hit. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. This could be Is a recube. Mm. This could be a recube. Okay, he didn't recube. That's sure. I think that was a mistake just to quickly roll the dice because look at the cry. Wow, oh, Joker. Here it is. Yeah. I think wow. actually it could have been a recube because uh, it's a six-point match and it's a recube, so you can definitely redouble more aggressively than you would for money or at zero zero. And there's the crunch in in Dirk's position. He had some ugly <clears throat> entries, for instance, double three. Um, but of <clears throat> course, Dirk got the Joker, and now he could actually win a gammon. He is gonna win a gammon, I wow. think. Wow! <laughs> wow! Okay, Dirk is back. <laughs> so this is how to get out of the time predicaments, just win gammons. Yeah. Get the game over quickly. Yeah. It's not so easy to win a gammon, and he's just done it back to back. <laughs> sure. I wonder what the viewers would do with that 6-5 if mm. they would play it safe. We have Guder Schnuder who wants to play safe to the two. Daniel Sanson mm. wanted to play it big. Okay, yeah, so mm. there's a little bit of mixed opinions there as well. Mm. Definitely one of the more interesting positions uh, for one here. Usually you want to anchor up, but I think I like Dirk's play here with six to five mm. because Max is completely underdeveloped and he has the flexibility with the back checker, so it's r rather easy to anchor up. So I like the play. Three, one... I think I think you want to play it pure here as well as Max. I think you want to make the five point rather than the four point and mm -hmm. just leave the shots. But I'm not completely sure. Okay, he got rewarded for his play. Got lucky. <laughs> because the thing is that purity increases. Wow, what is... Ah, yeah, he's six away, two away. It makes sense. I think mm -hmm. it's a good cube. And he rolls a perfect double four to make the five point. Mm -hmm. The reason I was tempted to make the five point earlier was... The more checkers who get hit back in the, the early stage of the game, the, the, the more value purity gets, the, the concept of purity. Uh, so in this case, your opponent already has four checkers back. He has a, more than 190 pips to go. Maybe now is the time to just play, make a pure play. Hmm. Can you explain the concept of purity? Purity is um, the concept of making your prime in, in a gap-free order. Okay. So, right, so uh, lining for, them up next to each other. Yeah, exactly. So the deeper okay. you go, the more impure it gets. That's the ace right. pure ace point is the most impure of all of your priming points. It's basically not a priming right. point. Um, okay. So in the starting position, you would say the most pure points would be the seven point and the five point because that fills I out see. the gaps. Uh, and then the more deeper you go, the less pure it becomes. So for instance, in back game strategy, purity is really, really important. You don't want to play impure. You don't want to play blitzing style moves. So uh, the blitz is often impure and, and the prime is uh, is a pure game plan because you need purity in order to prime. Right. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. So this What's is the opposite of pure? Dirty? <laughs> I would I just say impure. Impure. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the blitz is often impure and, and the priming game plan has to be pure because otherwise it's, it's not a good prime if it has gaps all right. over the place. I see. So here if he makes the seven, it's quite pure. That would be the pure play, yes. Okay. That's, that's a pure play. And, and right. he does make that play. The problem for, for Dirk is that his prime value is severely damaged by the fact that Max is having the 20-point the anger. Right. So it makes it really, really difficult for him to prime uh, getting yeah. prime because your opponent has that golden point mm -hmm. and now he's in trouble already here I think you need to let go of the nine point unfortunately yeah you... mm. 
level three. Would you point on the ace over here? I don't think that's the right idea because okay. Max really wants to play pure here because he's priming four checkers. His game nice. plan is not blitz, it's prime. Okay. So for that Let's reason, see. I think priming is just more important. Nice. Um, huh. Yeah, that's a good roll. He can make the eight point here and get the five prime. Yeah. Mm. So the deuce point would be more impure, more of a blitz style move, and and the making the, the eight point is more pure, more of a prime style move. Okay. Great. Now he has to do it, make an impure play. Hmm. Got a hit on the four. Right? I guess so. Yeah. Because what else can he do? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, Dirk has a bit of a chance here if, if if Max mm. can stay on the bar and Dirk can escape his back checkers meanwhile, then he will have a good game. Oh, that's a good shot. Max is free. That's also a good shot. He can make the 11 mm. point and block make the 6. The 11 block the 6s. Yes. Right. Exactly because look at how ugly the 6s are on the other side of the board. Mm. The double sure. 6, the 6 1, the 6 2 are blocking. Five two. Uh, it's, yeah, I think that's the only play you could consider running from the anger, but that's not the right idea here. Mm. Four two. Oh, that's not good. Mm. I don't think you leave a shot here. The race is too close. I think this was one of those times where you just simply bury a check. Bury the one. Yeah. Yeah. The race was so close that any hit, and you're up against the five point board actually. Mm. Oh yeah, that was bad. That was really bad. That was a blunder, I think. Hmm. So Max, but at least Max is just sticking to his principles. He's playing uh, flexible and pure. Don't bury checkers. Like that's a pretty <clears> good <throat> principle to follow. But I think here was one of those exceptions where you just, for tactical reasons, needed to bury a checker. Right. Cool. Is uh, a shot. Yeah, seven. We have Hussein saying now Urban has trouble with his time bank. Yeah, both of them <laughs> are definitely in time trouble. Sure. Well, they're both playing a lot quicker. They have to. So at yeah. least they're they're fighting for for their life here. Double three. That's Ooh, a, it's a nice roll. Such a nice roll, yeah, for the race. And here, I think actually, just Max would just leave. Just run. Mm. There's so little contact value left by staying. Right. It's just a 6-2, right? It's a 6-2 and double 6 and double 5. So it's four numbers. Right. Okay. So he hits oh. that approximately. <laughs> oh, wow. So yeah. if he stays, he will hit him approximately one and a half out of 36 times. That's sure. not a lot. And if he yeah. runs, he has a little bit of race value still. Yeah. So, of course, not when... Dirk rolls the double five, but <laughs> it's actually not game over here. He has a little bit. If he can get a double six, but it's very unlikely that Max will win this one. Mm. Um, well, he hasn't missed yet. Let's see. So nice. Yeah. Oh, that's a miss. Oh, okay. Do you know the these two guys personally, Nick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're both part of the Cape Town uh, Cape Town community. Okay. So now we see yeah. the PRs. This is going to be interesting. Right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do you think? Uh, wow. Oh, this is close. Okay. This could it's very be close. this could be this could be um, decided on the XG plus uh, analysis, XG, huh? Right. Yeah. I think they played really well. Very, very good. Um so I guess I would prefer not to do the analysis because my computer is already streaming. So if either you could do the analysis, Nick, or one of the players could run it through world-class analysis on Extreme Gammon so we can have the yeah. final. That's the rules I of this tournament. Them, uh, that, for sure. That, I told them to run it. Okay, good. Meanwhile, we can check some of the big decisions here on Galaxy. Uh, okay, let's start from the end. Seven games. So what did we have here? Okay, so what I'm doing now, Nick, is I'm running through the uh, <clears> the match in Galaxy. If you want to do the same, I can let you know uh, the numbers of the moves that I'm talking about. And okay, yeah. Okay, so here the oh yeah, that was clearly the right play. Three one. I was tempted to make a stupid play. Good play, Max. 
And then we have something here. Oh, this was a non-hit. Ah, this is a back game. The right idea here would to was to make the back game move like this. Interesting. Okay, so we get into this back game position. Uh, oh, this is tricky. 5-1. Better play here again. Don't make an impure play. Max is making impure plays. We didn't really follow this game too well. Nick and I. Mm. Double three. Which game are you looking at? Game I'm looking at the, no, I'm looking at the game seven, the last game. Seven. Okay. So here's a mistake. Don't leave the shots. And he burned two checkers. And purity is really important here. He has three back checkers. Um, and now he has to hit. And what else? Oh, yeah. Then he comes around. Four, two. Oh, yeah. This one. So the, the move here in the last game where he volunteered a shot was a 71 error. So just below a blunder the okay. right play was indeed just to bury a checker um, i found that six five and uh 13 two was the correct play oh which which what what moon that's number in was game that? six that's in move game 28. six okay let's see move 28 oh yeah there's an some a couple of ugly plays in the in this one <laughs> yeah. uh move 28 you say Oh yeah, okay, the 6-5, that was the best play, well played. Yeah. Oh, it was actually a clear play. Yeah, yeah okay, B the problem is, like, you... <laughs> Before you roll the dice, my hand is already up at the blood on the 23 point. This is the, sure. the good old uh, <laughs> uh, falafel quote, that uh, it's like you, you should already be touching the, the... You know which checkers you should you're supposed to touch even before the right. dice rolls, right? This right. checker is just calling out yes. to be to come out um, Absolutely. especially because of this little avalanche of front loaded spare checkers on the four point but right. the problem is if you come out then you don't have a five to play you need to give a double shot and you don't want to do that so okay fair mm. enough the best place just to bury the damn checker mm. right yeah um, and i guess if you're used to playing speed gam and then your mouse is going to be hovering on the checker you think you're going to move yeah probably yeah, for sure yeah. for sure i mean yeah. that's what my attention in my brain went to yeah let's review this it's quite thing. interesting also if you go back to move seven yeah where let's... there was that four one with three options oh yeah i'm actually want to i want to look at move five first because that was okay. the blunder just before so six three yeah we called him out on that one the better play would be to make the three point not run uh right. no need to stack the midpoint here you're not scared of getting blitzed so and then yeah move seven the two six oh yes it's a blunder it's like um, you can say that usually playing nine to three is a safer play since you just leave twelve shots uh, mm. than slotting the seven point where you leave typically seventeen shots. And here there's a little bit extra because there's a lot of blood on the nine nine point. But the thing is that your opponent has two inner blots, which definitely increases your propensity to play bold, and you need to develop your position. You you have a really right. really crap position after playing nine mm. to three, so this mm. was just a great opportunity to develop your position and Max didn't take it. Right. Max, so Mark, if you go back to game five, uh huh, and you look at the first blunder. It's move seven. It was that four one with quite a few oh, options. Oh yes, yes. I think he yeah. played the the third my third choice, and I think maybe I would have made the the twenty twenty point, but as we can yeah. see here, the seven. Yeah, I think I quickly identified the seven point was better than the four point. And that's not always the case. Usually, actually, the four point is okay. better. But the key here is the, the way that you prime those back checkers. Yeah. They're so deep that the seven point is just so good here. So strong yeah. in terms of prime value. Right. Uh, where it's the four, more pure. Right? It's more pure. I mean, the four point yeah. is also pure because it's the next point in your prime. Sure. But the seven point is the purest point mm -hmm. because that's where your gap is. So yeah, right. here you really want to prime rather than blitz. So yeah, making the seven point makes sense here. Okay. Um, okay. So the question for me was whether to make the twenty or, or make the mm. the seven point. But okay. Um, mm. And then he, yeah, it was there was a missed cube. I don't mm. remember if we called him out on that one. Uh, if we no, called I don't out Dirk. So. But it looks now that we look at it, it looks like such a big cube, and it's even a p small pass. 
Right. It's even a small pass, yeah, 26% gamma and 68% winning chances. Uh, so what are the aspects that make it such a clear cube? It's the fact that he's outboarded. Well, my framework is, if, if you have to give like a quick explanation, I would just run mm -hmm. through what I call the value equation. So you run through, okay. run through the four game plans for each of the players. So that's the right. uh, three offensive ones, prime, blitz, and race, and the de defensive uh -huh. one, contact. And then you just evaluate these four game plans over both players. And what you see here is that black is ahead in the prime department because he has a pure, mm -hmm. pr stronger prime, he's four prime, and he's priming three back checkers versus two. And the mm -hmm. back checkers are more deeply trapped than his own back checkers. Right. And he's also ahead in the blitz game plan uh, because right. he has 11 checkers in the zone. Uh, there's a blood to be attacked there in the deuce point. And he's also ahead in the race with the right. 100 uh, with 17 yeah. pips so of course right. white has a lot of contact value here or at least a good amount but it's not quite mm. enough you know he's down too much uh in, right. in all the game plans okay so, so that's a little bit more advanced than uh position race and threat it's kind of the same i just feel like pratt sure. is is really lacking the the fourth and Complexity. defensive game plan uh, contact right. i mean contact is such okay. an integral part of backgammon that's why right. you like in monopoly when you get a small edge in the opening game you will win the game like there's no coming <laughs> back but that's not the case in backgammon you know you can turn the game around Contact right. is, is, is such a huge part of, of the game, and I think like Pratt is just ignoring that that element of the game I plans. See. But it's it's right. basically the same. Lovely. So Max has uh, he sent me the XG analysis. Uh huh. They both. Uh, I'll reveal it to you slowly. They both played world class. Wow, good. They both they both played a four point something. Uh huh. And uh, Max played a four point one five, and Cheeky Boy played a four point five. Uh, so okay, so we're going to see the five-point match. We're playing a five-point yeah. match. Max yeah. played a 4.1 and and uh, Dirk played a 4.5. Really strong level. Yeah. They uh, right. they are performing at the big stage now. Good for them. Mm. You just got to watch the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think Max could have played really well if he hadn't made that those two blunders in a row in the early game six. Mm. He made two pretty big blunders there, so... Max could have been right. in the threes if he had a little bit more time. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so are we ready for the five-point game? We are. Let's go. Cool. Let me tell him. If the players yeah. are ready. Um, okay, we're waiting Let's for see. them to... Neil Kazaros is in the... Uh... He's in the comments now. Yes. Um, what is he saying? He says he came late to the match. He was studying cube like a boss. Way to go, Neil. I I don't think I mentioned Neil Casaros in cube like a boss, but I do in uh, From Basics to Badass. I mentioned the Neil's mm -hmm. numbers. I think that's a great way of uh, remembering match equities. Not the most important thing in backgammon, but... If you want to be really nerdy, you need to know your match equities. Mm -hmm. And then they're talking something about a prop or something. Prop was Najib gets opening 3-3, play 2-1, uh, 21 and 10 point, and I get cube. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so they're talking about some sort of prop. Okay, there's there it is. The this match is again, on its yeah. way. Again, we have Max Urban playing as top player and Dirk. How do you see, What was his last name? Housley? Dirk Housley. Housley. Yeah. Exactly. Dirk Housley playing as the blue checkers and under the nickname of Cheeky Boy. So now it's a five point match. And again, it's the UBC sudden death format. You need to win match and PR. Um, and, uh, and Max is undefeated in the tournament so far. It's double elimination. Oh, I like that play actually. I think I mm. like that play coming up with two. Ah, wait, he's down in the race. I'm not so sure. This is going to be a double tiger. Okay. I think. If he finds it. Ah, maybe it's too aggressive. He's up in the race. You know what? I'm changing my opinion here. Okay. I think I'm changing my opinion. It just looks so natural to make the double tiger here, but you're up in the race. Yeah, that, I think that's the right play. That is the right play. That is the right play. 6-4. Sure. 
Um, okay, yeah. Duplicating threes a little bit. And now he's going to hit in the outfield and cover. Easy play. Definitely an easy play here to hit in the outfield and cover. Nice. To gain the race. Yeah, he does find it. That's a hit. Uh, do you hit back or make the anchor? Do you hit back? Definitely hit back. Always hit back. Okay. okay. It's early enough in the match. Yeah. Put your opponent on the roof. Okay. Gain the race. Forward two. Again, I think this is going to be a hit on the four point. Mm -hmm. He is a bit exposed here, Max, after that hit, but I think it's the only thing he can do. Anything else just le leaves all the initiative to your opponent. That's a double nice. hit. Double hits, yeah. Okay. Good play. Oh, is this a cube? Nah, it's a little bit too early. Completely even race. There's no priming going mm -hmm. on. There's some blitz value for Ch Cheeky Boy. Oh, ah, that's too, it, it. It's too aggressive. It's way too aggressive. Aggressive. Nine checkers in the zone. Two point board versus two point board. Even race. It, it could actually be a blunder to cube this. I think it is. Oh. I think it's a blunder to cube okay. it. Sure. Yeah, it's way too early. Even if he had the seven point made, it was probably not even a double. If you took a okay. checker from the midpoint and put it down on the, on the seven point, seven. Right. I don't think it's a double. So what is he gonna do now with this annoying roll, huh? He's really getting punished for that aggressive cube. Yeah. And Max has so many good rolls. He's gonna mm. make the 18 here. Make the 18. It's the cover on the two and up the four, or 13, 11? Um, I'm sorry, I was just distracted by a question, ah, question no from Ryan Brower, who says, Mark, I have a question, all caps <laughs> and four exclamation marks. Would you say the pips are white and blue or white and purple? I would say that they're definitely white and purple. So ah. it's, oh, no, sorry, 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 my bad. No, 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 oh. white and blue, white and blue, uh, galaxy blue, that's the, Blue is the official color for backgammon galaxies. So, but on right. some, some some monitors, they can seem a little bit purple, purplish. <clears throat> oh, and the double falcon coming out with both checkers here from from Cheeky Boy. I think it's a great play. <clears throat> Almost double Max falcon. Is, all... is it, it is it a, only a double falcon if there's a direct hit? Yeah, technically, uh, I think you need to uh, be exposed to a double shot. Uh, okay. Then it's a double falcon. So this would right. not qualify as a double falcon. It would just be okay. a coming out with two. It's checkers. almost a double falcon. It's uh... <laughs> uh, it's it's half of the dynamics of the double falcon was present. Sure. So right. not all the conditions. Is this a recube? Ah, mm -hmm. yes, it is, and it's a pass. It's a big sure. pass. Yeah, you were up right. seven pips. One man back positions you uh, without. Uh, and being down in the race, that's just too much heat. And it's a redouble, so he should even pass, even uh, pass. What do you say? Even more than he usually would. Right. Yeah. Even more regularly. Maybe. Yeah. This is a huge. Even faster. Even faster. Yeah. <laughs> huge pass. So Dirk got punished for his aggressiveness here. <clears throat> it seems fair. <laughs> There's some justice in the world. It's not not often you can say that in the background. <laughs> no, at least not in the short run. Definitely nice. not. So full of variance and crazy dice sequences. Mm. Wow, that's a powerful roll. Lovely. That is a powerful roll. Double hit. I think so. Make the deuce and hit on the sixteen. I'm not sure what's taking him so long. Yeah, that's the play. And now the cube is coming. Now the cube is definitely coming. And I think it's a take still. I think that this is still mm. a take because look at the impurity in Dirk's position. And Max has an nice. anger. And he has a little bit of counter prime mm. already. A little bit of counter blitz and a little bit of counter prime. So Max has plenty of contact value and he still has a little bit of prime and blitz. Doesn't have any race, of course. Down almost 30 pips. Mm. Aha, the bold play there from 
Dirk, he's really squeezing the lemon here. <laughs> Can you say that in English? Is that an expression? Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice expression. <laughs> I think you're learning about his style. <laughs> That's good. I like him. Mm. I need to adjust his aggression with level with the cube a little bit, but not too bad. Okay, so that's look look at Max's position here. He's really mm. uh, getting into a good counter prime, um, yeah. and there's still some gaps in the prime of wow double force. Amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. How is he gonna play it? Make the seven with the other two. I think you definitely two need to come up. Yeah, you need to come up to the twenty. And now the question is: Do you make the seven or the the four point? Okay, he chooses the four point. Mm. I think I like it. Um, the seven point would have been a little bit more pure, so probably a little bit better in terms of prime value. But you you also want to maximize your blitz value. You know, we're maximizing nice. our all our all of our game plans when we play nice. backgammon. So I think I like the four point, but I'm not sure. Um, that play didn't look completely right to me. I think maybe the 5-3 was wrong from Dirk, but I wasn't fully concentrated. Right. What about here? With the, you slot the 5 for the 1? I guess you do, right? Because what else? Ah, you could that. also you could also split the, the, the outfield. I think I like uh, slotting more. Here you leave how many? 6-3, six, 6-4, six, four, four, 5 So you're already mm. leaving 6 shots. So you leave 12 instead of 6, but then you keep structure and you slot the 5. I think I would have slot the 5 point instead of splitting the 11 point. But it's probably no big deal. Now you definitely want to come down and make the 11 and 10. I hope he sees it. It's way better for mm. containment to make the 11 and 10 here than the 8 point. In the 8. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. Okay, he does make the 8 point. I think that's a mistake. He got lucky. Dear Max. Mm. Yeah, he got lucky actually. Ah, oh, this is also a little bit of an annoying pay play because Dirk, Dirk really wants to come out here with the six, but yeah. he doesn't want to destroy his inner board because he's going to be under attack, and then you want inner board points. But what else can he do? You don't want to. <clears throat> so I, I like his play. You could have even considered four to three with the ace instead of two to one, just to have a stronger inner board. But it would, yeah, it's not good. 4-3 would be stronger because it preserves that point. So here's the thing. You always have a trade-off between purity, slotting and playing pure, which will then make your inner board better in the future, or playing a little bit more impure now, but have a stronger inner board now in the present okay. or in the, in the short yes. run. So that's the trade-off. Yeah. And so I think here, when you're one man back and you're under attack and you're fighting to escape, you're fighting for freedom, you're always under attack. So you really want to have inner board strength. That's the thing. So okay. the trade-off there is usually you want to focus on the short-term strength rather than the long-term strength. So for that reason, maybe I liked four to three a little bit better than than uh, two to one, but it's no big deal, mm. probably. Yeah. Okay. I can see Neil Casares would have slotted with the with the ace earlier, and he would have made the ten and the eleven as well. So he's following my lead. And then we had Ryan Brower saying, "Thank you, Mark. Haha. <laughs> no, Hani Niash. One of my mates is either slow or colorblind, or just has really shitty MacBook Air from 2011." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seeing the purple colors, it could actually be something like this. The yeah. old MacBooks has yeah could be something like this. You know, I think it was one of the first discussions, one of the first debates we had once we all started playing on Galaxy was what color the checkers were. <laughs> um, <laughs> somebody used the fact that the doubling cube is blue, therefore the checkers cannot be blue. Um, oh, but... Yeah. Well, then they, they but of course to... there's different types of blue. Yeah, that's the thing. That's There's actually yeah. only blue in this... Co because even... Except for the white checkers, they are white, but they're not even 100% white. <laughs> So all of the colors here is just a basically just a two tone or two color board where it's just blue and white right. and then everything is adjusted which is actually a kind of a, a unconventional choice design because most backgammon boards are three color boards um, yeah. but for aesthetic reasons and marketing reasons we we chose to go with a more modern 
two color design. Nice. So that was the argument behind that, or the reasoning mm -hmm. behind it. I think you need to make a skin for XG that uh, matches the color, I the have color it. palette of Calyx. I have it already, Do Nick. Yes, it's going oh, to be great. launched. Maybe I don't know if it's launched already. It should. It was made last year, so Xavier okay. from XG, he, he should actually just launch it. And he have should. It, it, it looks, when I was transcribing the game, I wanted to. I wanted it to look the same, but yeah, it wasn't possible. Hey, right, here's a shot. There's a shot. Meanwhile. There's a shot. Let's see if he can hit it. He can. And he hits. Um, should he just play pure here? I think he should just play pure with all that, bur all those buried checkers from Dirk. I think that was a good play from uh, from Max. And oh yeah, this is a. I think this is a recube. Yes, it is. It is a recube. Wow. And uh, he needs Dirk needs nineteen percent now to take, or eighteen and point six percent, four away, one away, and he instantly passes i think it's a pass i think it looks like a pass i don't think he has 19 sure. so good play Neil i Castle. think i'm about five kilometers away from cheeky boy right now but i think i heard him swear when uh, max hit that plot <laughs> yeah yeah can't be happy he almost had it 5-1 again we see cheeky boy with an aggressive opening i like his style 6-3 that's an awkward shot from Max, I think he's gonna run all the way with the back checker on the 24. Mm. Neil Casares asks, where are these skins? Well, Neil, uh, I know that Xavier made one specially f for me to do streams. It's on my other computer in my other apartment, but so I don't have it here, but there is a Galaxy skin out there for uh, for uh, backgammon or a uh, backgammon Galaxy skin for Extreme Gammon. It's, I, I, but it's, I guess it's not released yet. We should ask Xavier to release it next next time he makes an update. I see Neil is also correcting your match equity oh, instead of nineteen percent. Oh, I thought he was four away. My brain had him at four away. My bad, guys. He was five away. <laughs> so yes, of course, it's 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 fifteen point eight percent. Neil Casaras, who has a match equity table named after him, of course he he knows these percentages. Did you know that Nick? The the extreme gammon standard default match equity table is uh, is named after Neil Casaras because he oh, really? he was one of wow. the developers of it. Amazing. Oh, I think I've seen that actually. Is it hyphenated with another name? Oh. It's the what are they called? Aren't they just called the the Cas two match equity tables? Let me look it up. Uh, what it? I think it's just called the Casarus XG2. I'm not focusing on the match right now because I'm googling. What's it called? Maybe some. Yeah, it's just called the Casarus XG2 match equity table. Okay. Yeah. Casarus. Okay, Neil is correcting us himself. Casarus XG2 is the name of the match equity table. Okay. Thanks, Neil. That's it. Um, okay, so I already like this about the backgammon community. I feel like it's uh, it's 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 fairly large, but at the same time, it's quite a small, close community where where you can be engaging on YouTube channels with you know everybody. Yeah, it's Very pretty cool. cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. We definitely want to try and host an international tournament in South Africa. That would be amazing. Um, we should have. Yeah. We should bring the the UPC to to South Africa. That would be fun. That would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure players are tired of going to uh, to the same beautiful locations around <laughs> Europe. So now something different. Yeah. yeah. I think it would be a great success. Maybe uh, if lockdown ever ends. Oh, that's the thing, yeah. huh? We need a vaccine. <laughs> so Max's time is ticking. It's ticking here. He has a real decision here. This is not too easy because yeah, he chooses a single hit. Which he chooses a single hit, which is yeah. I mean, that was a tricky decision. Really, really tough decision because Dirk has the back game. So all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's a matter of timing, 
and if you hit too many checkers maybe you're giving him too much timing or if he if you hit checkers and he fails to get them free then it's bad for his timing then he might crunch earlier so it's very nice. tough these decisions mm. whether to hit or not in the back game is another tough decision nah. and he's down to one minute yeah okay so he chose to play very pure and flexible but it, i'm not sure i agree actually how would you have played that um i'm just not sure that he needed to 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 take any chances for getting more flexibility here he had plenty of flexibility so I, i'm not sure i wasn't really concentrated it just seemed a okay. little bit big to me but it could be that it was okay okay mm. double five it's not good for his timing <laughs> Ryan Brower says vaccines cause scammers. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that would be something. Gammon vaccines. Because it makes them an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if you could take a vaccine that prevented you from gammons. Mm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ryan is actually the uh, uh, unofficial graphic designer. I don't know if you can see here on my. Hoodie, this is the Cape Town Backgammon logo designed. Nice one, Ryan. Yeah. Cool. Also did the uh, South African Backgammon Association logo. Uh huh. Okay. Is he a yeah. professional designer yeah, or is uh, just a? Uh, I think he. I think he studied it, but uh, he doesn't do it professionally. Okay. He could though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we have the 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 shallow back game here. The the five two back game and Max is down to his last three points in front of the back games to clear. So it's actually looking good until he rolled this six five. Now it's not looking too mm. good. He can hold his back game one more roll. Dirk. Make the three. I think so. Yes. And now he needs to run from the front anger. Oh, uh, mm. maybe it's not bad actually. I didn't <laughs> see that play. Maybe it's not bad. I, I think I like that play. He didn't mm. bury any checkers. Wow, deuces. Yeah, that's strong. I didn't see that play at first, but I think it was the right idea, actually, to keep the back game one more roll, and he didn't burn any checkers. Right. So do you stay on the 20 point now? I guess so. Yeah. Two from the rear. Of course, you play two from the rear here. Yeah. 3-2, he needs to let it go, mm. he needs to let that block go. It. What is he thinking about? Yeah, yeah, of course that's the right thing. Oh, here's a shot. He does get it. No, he fails to hit. Now is the time. Maybe another one. He, can, he does get another one. Now is the time. There's the hit. Bingo. Bingo. We get to see another game. Mm. Okay, Burak Usman says, it would be nice to see players' moves before they hit the clock. I agree with you, Burak. That is a an advanced feature that we would like to implement, and hopefully it will come soon, uh, or sooner rather than later. But we have some pretty big things in the makings in the Backgammon Galaxy development dep department. So we're not, I'm not going to say too much about it now, but we have some pretty big things coming up that we've been spending all our time on. So that's one of the things that will be a task for the future. Okay, double three. People are oh, very wait. happy about the fact wait, 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 wait. that what happened? he got a hit here. He didn't hit? He missed the hit? Wow. Oh, shit. And we, did, we missed that he missed the hit. Jesus Christ. I was just like seeing in the chat Oh, what? rest in peace, PR. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a sure... Sorry, Dick. Uh, you misclicked. You misclicked. Ay, that's so horrible. Uh, oh. No. What, oh, a what a horrible way for this to end. <laughs> but how can he misclick on such a... I mean, misclicking, that's something you do in a bear off or something. How can you misclick on such a crucial move? The crucial moment of the match. And then you misclick. <laughs> no idea. Oh, that's brutal. That's really brutal. Oh, poor guy. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. Gosh. Oof. I think I can hear him screaming again. Yeah. 
<laughs> but I mean, congratulations to Max, undefeated in the South African Galaxy Championship 2020, and he played a 4.1 and a 3.0 in the in the final. So he really stepped up, and I think he proved that he is indeed the strongest player in South Africa at the moment. Definitely. Would you would you agree, Nick? Definitely, I think it's something we've suspected for some time. Uh, He's the regular. He regularly wins the A League in Cape Town, and uh, for some time Dirk has, has stayed out of the league and been more of a Chouette player. And um, we've always wondered what it would be like for for Dirk to integrate a bit more with the community. And I think we got our chance to see that with this UBC format. Yeah, I was really pleased when the two of them made the final, and um, I think they didn't disappoint. It was pretty good. Right up to the end. They did good. Just did an unfortunate Dirk, way for things to end. It was a brutal way. I mean, uh, I think he did well, uh, Dirk. I, mean, he, I think he played really well. He had this uh, very aggressive cube here in game one. Yeah, it's almost a 200 blunder. Really, really big uh, yes. blunder. But I mean, he played really well, to be honest. Um, mm. What? Let me just scroll quickly through the match here to see. Yeah, no blunders, no blunders. And then there's a little bit of errors here. 4-1, yeah, the 4-1. I'm in move 17, game 2 now, the 4-1. So me and Neil Caceres were, were right. It's better to just slot. I think you would have slotted as well, Nick. Yeah. Then there's a 6-3 here from from Max. Better play would come out. But, but Max played really well. I mean, did he avoid blunders? Oh, there's a blunder here. Ah, I actually think wow. in move 17. I, I uh, yeah. complimented on, on him on his move. On the pure play. But yeah. uh, I, th you know what? I think I know why. It's because of the cube. The score, yeah. I think it's because of the cube. I think he can cube okay. efficiently if he gets missed. Right. Okay. And he doesn't want to lose a gammon. He really doesn't want to lose a gammon, and he could lose a gammon if that blood is here. Let me just check out the details on this move. See, gammon's got a four percent. Yeah. Gammons go to no, no. It goes to uh, oh yeah, four percent. Yes. Yeah. I have him half a percent to four percent. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the play in double match point. And if your own gammons matters, because you can also mm -hmm. win gammons when you re hit. That's the key. It's he's playing gammon safe here. That's why you should pick up that mm -hmm. blood. Right. Okay, so it's not so much about Q efficiency, more about gammon safe. And then mm -hmm. game three here. I think that was the only blunder from Max. Max played really well in this match. And then he had a really tough decision here in game three, move 17. Yeah, I see that. Really, really six tough four, decision. I think. Just don't hit anything. I think that's what Kazara said in the comments. He would have played 6-4 with the two. I agree. He called it out. And then 6-4 mm -hmm. on move 19. I didn't have really have time to find the best play. I just, my mm -hmm. brain just, something was wrong. I just detected something. And like, he was mm -hmm. a little bit too big. He was forcing flexibility here with no really need to do it. He's... Plan is right. to, to, to just clear the points. And it's flexible it's, enough. Yeah, it's flexible enough. Okay. and Yeah. Um, oh, the 4-2. He should have given up the 20 point in move. What move number is this? this right. Is 32. 32, yes. Okay. Come out. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, he gave up a point and a half. <laughs> so, <a f> okay. <laughs> the biggest blunder I've seen in a long time. Yeah. That oh, was, uh, that's gonna haunt him. Yeah, that's gonna haunt him. Let's let me mm -hmm. try to estimate what his equity would, uh, his PR would have been. His his PR would probably be in the range of a four, between a four and a five, without this move, I think. Okay. So yeah, that was sure. pretty horrible. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to Max Urban for being the winner and representative of South Africa in the upcoming uh, Galaxy International Champions Tournament. Hopefully it'll be in November, December or something. So that's going to be cool to see how he will do in that in that field because that's going to be mm -hmm. competitive. Uh, and we have one more thing, Nick. Uh, we have to make the random draw for the winner. Of, of course. Of the what? What is this prize? I think this prize is a five night stay in one of those hotels, Proteo Hotel. Um, Proteo Hotel is offering a five night stay um, to the lucky uh, participant. We had to make the condition you had to you had to play the matches that you qualified for in the tournament, so we couldn't have just random people entering. Okay. But um, uh, we've got a we've got two winners already in in Hani and Ryan, so they can't win. 
Okay, maybe uh, we should, we're should, excited to see who it is. Should I remove them from the list, or can we simply just, if they show up at the top, we will take the second one? Yeah, I think so. Because now it's just the winner, right? The the, the, the player who comes out at top is the winner of the, the hotel stay. Right. Okay, are you ready? Let's I'm see. ready. Randomize, let's see. Lee Bakewell. Ah, uh, okay. So Lee is currently living in the UK, so that might be complicated. <laughs> However... <laughs> So let's let's say he's the winner, but if you yeah. could draw another name just as a alternative, you can't make it. I mean, then I think we should go with number two here, which is Raphael okay. Rom. So I guess you could uh, yeah talk to Lee if he can okay. cash in or not. Great. Nick, thank you so much for organizing this tournament. It was such a great pleasure to get to know you, and you did an amazing job organizing it. So big thanks from Back Among Galaxy to you. Well done. Great, thank you. Yeah, we... Uh, we were really honored to be uh, invited to participate, so thanks. That's uh, thanks our much. pleasure. And thanks for all the viewers for watching. We still have 107 viewers, 90 likes. So um, if you haven't smashed it, if you're one of those 17 who hasn't smashed it, probably more than 17, smash the like button, subscribe to the Galaxy YouTube channel. And uh, if you haven't put a positive review on Facebook, please do so because we've had a little <laughs> bit of a rigged dice conspiracy going on and only the, <laughs> the players who believe that the dice are against them go in and they just put a put us down on Facebook and say this is a fucking piece of crap. So um, if you haven't done so and you want to help out by Gamma Galaxy, make a positive review on Facebook. That's all. Thanks guys awesome. for watching and uh, see you next time. Thank you, Nick. Take care. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Mark. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you.